Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome to the very first episode of the Los Angeles Clippers My NBA Series here on NBA 2K23 for the first time in three years we are here with NBA 2K. I'm excited to be bringing this series to you guys. I'm excited to be playing some basketball again. It's been a long time since we did the Pelican Series back on NBA 2K20. Had a fun time with that one and just for various reasons I've never done another NBA series, but we're going to change that this year with the Los Angeles Clippers being the team we're going to use here at NBA 2K23. For those who watched the team reveal and showed out to the premiere yesterday, I really appreciate you guys. Just thank you guys just for continuing to support the channel, even through it's been a very up and down year as of this year, but I hope you guys are ready to kick off another chapter, another series here on the channel. If you are, make sure you drop that like button and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more sports and franchise content, my NBA content, whatever you want to call it, that like and that subscribe lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content. Uh, but yes, we are doing the Los Angeles Clippers this year. A very interesting pick. Um, I really have gone back and forth with this up until I revealed it yesterday. I had a couple of other teams in mind, but I landed on the Clippers just for a couple of reasons. And we're gonna jump into that today. Partly because one, they're a big time city. We haven't done a big time series in basketball. Last time we did the Pelicans, which was very known for their younger core. The Clippers, on the other hand, they are known for their veteran core. And with a lot of veterans, you're gonna see up over 30, you know, the clock is kind of ticking on these Los Angeles Clippers. They haven't really lived up to their performance. They've never been to an NBA Finals. They've been a team for over 52 years and they play in the same city as Los Angeles Lakers and have always been that smaller, just little brother kind of team. And we're gonna change that here in this series. We're gonna look to take the Clippers to their first ever, not only NBA Finals, but their first ever championship and see if we can do it with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George and company, or maybe we'll have to do it another way. But I'm just very excited for all the avenues we can take this team. So let's go ahead and get started. We pick the Los Angeles Clippers and I'll meet you guys in my NBA. All right, we're here in my NBA draft classes. I haven't settled on a draft class yet, but we will be using real life players. You know, this is a realistic channel rebuild, so we're also not gonna be just trading for LeBron James and Kevin Durant and all those stars. Right out of the gate, we're gonna build this realistically like you would see, and we are gonna use real players. I'll have to find a draft class if right now I am gonna have auto-generated rookies, but we will find that. And I do have dynamic storytelling on, so we will see updates with it. And we'll be able to scout the players. If you haven't seen the Pelican series, I recommend it. I'll link it in the description below as well as at the end of this video. But we will take a look at some scouting. We'll take a look at college games. We'll take a look at overseas games in the series. This is gonna be a very immersive series. So you guys are in for a treat, but all generate rookies for now. And we are in here with the Los Angeles Clippers. Here's a look quickly at the schedule, but we're gonna take a look at the team really quick, just to kind of give you guys a rundown on what to expect, who is on the roster and company. Here is your Los Angeles Clippers, and obviously the big star is Kawhi Leonard, the Los Angeles born superstar, who is definitely our biggest face here in this organization, and he is signed a long term, so he is the face of the Clippers, one of the best players in the NBA when he is healthy and that has been the issue Kawhi Leonard missed all of last year rehabbing that knee injury and the Clippers suffered because of it you know when Kawhi Leonard is not on the floor this is not the same basketball team and we have Kawhi Leonard healthy this year but can he hold up you know it's the second season where he's missed almost the entire season so we got a little bit you know can we trust Kawhi Leonard for an entire season. We're hoping we can, especially at the age of 31. Well, time is kind of running out. Speaking of 30s, the second biggest man, Paul George, PG-13, playoff P, whatever you want to call him, but he is also 32 years of age, and he is also locked up for a little bit. So we have Paul George also on a big money contract for a couple years with a player option in 2024. I'm assuming he's going to opt into that, but between Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they are two superstars and they are locked in for the future so we're really hoping that they can deliver into their 30s and you know basketball is a sport that takes a lot on the body so kind of the same thing with paul george is he going to be able to be okay you know him and Kawhi leonard are the top two and after that there's really not a lot of young or just star power behind them so we really 
really relying on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That's part of the reason why I picked the Clippers. Yes, they have two big superstars, and yes, they could be a threat right away, but you know, can you stay healthy for an 82-game season? That's something we're going to have to navigate. That's something we're going to have to follow as the season unfolds. Now, after Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, next star we have, the third best player, is Norman Powell. He is the shooting guard of the team at 29 years of age, also locked up for the foreseeable future into his 30s. So that's our, our top three players are going to be in their 30s with big-time contracts that could be an issue down the line. And that's something, like I said, we're going to have to navigate. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. How do we manage all these contracts while at the same time improving this team getting it ready for the years to come acquired last year in from the portland trailblazers norman power better more of a shooter we're hoping he can just add some range also on that outside and then behind him the former number one overall pick back in 2010 john wall who's also in his 30s age 32 another player like Kawhi Leonard, who did not play last year set all of last year out when he was a member of the houston rockets so he's also in his 30s and coming off a year where he didn't play so once again can John Wall hold up for a whole season? Yes, he didn't miss because of injury, so to speak, but he is coming off a 30-year season, has to get back into the grind of a full NBA season. Unlike Leonard and George, though, he is under contract for this year, guaranteed next year. We do have a team option for 6.8, which is relatively cheap for a player that could be John Wall's caliber. So John Wall, you know, not expensive for the long term, but I would like to see the John Wall that he was drafted in the one overall at the show at Los Angeles. He could low-key be an X-factor for this team. If John Wall can play, if he can be that superstar he was meant to be, yes, even in his 30s, then that could be another element for this Clippers team. Then we get to our youngest star, so to speak, and Ivica Zubak. He is the center. He is going to be the down low man, seven foot from Croatia, also under contract for a couple years in the $10, $11 million figures. If he can improve, if he continues to improve, that contract could be a steal. And he could be the face of the future once Leonard and George go on. This is going to be a multi-year My NBA series. And, you know, if Leonard and George have to move on, Zubac could be the face of Los Angeles. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm excited to have him on the roster, though. Somebody down low that we can count on to get rebounds and, you know, block the paint and stuff like that, considering he is... A plus in the rebounds. Don't expect him to go outside, though. I, we just really need them to collect those boards. Then also another point guard we have who also is 32 is Reggie Jackson, who's been around the block for a long time. Signed for just this year. Reggie Jackson has been with the Clippers for quite a few years since coming over from Detroit. Had a very good season last year, averaging 16.8 points per game. But he did see his efficiency numbers go down for the first time. Field goal percentage in the 30s. So he's also starting to tail off. He's only under contract for this season. So maybe we can squeeze those last little bit of drops out of Reggie Jackson. Then we have Marcus Morris, the senior, 33. So out of our top seven players, five of them are in their 30s. So definitely an older squad. And we've seen how that's worked out in the past for some teams. Marcus Morris, another kind of down low kind of guy, maybe the sixth man off the bench. Him and Reggie Jackson will probably be the leaders of that second unit. So we need Marcus Morris to be a presence down low, which is not what he's really known for. Despite being a power forward player, you know, power forward center, he's not good at being a big man. He's kind of the opposite of Zubak. He's more of a scoring big man. And we'll have to see how that works with this offense, especially when you have Leonard and George. You don't really need a scoring big man. You need somebody who's going to go down there and get bored. So we'll see how Marcus Morris fits with this team. Luke Kennard is another young player who can light it up from three-point range. He's just going to be a scorer off the bench, the former Detroit Piston, who's been with Los Angeles for quite a few years. I like Luke Kennard. I think he could really be an impact off that second team, so nice addition. Then we have Robert Covington, the 31-year-old, who can score in the level. He's a hybrid defender, though. He's more of a defensive kind of player. Also came over from Portland with Norman Powell last year. And he's also under contract for two years, but not as much next season in his age 32 campaign. But somebody else we also need more veteran in that second unit. Nicholas Batum, he's been around the league for quite some time. Just a more of a scorer, also can be a defender. So kind of like that Robert Covington role. They kind of fit the same thing. So we don't really need both on the roster. and They're both signed for the next two years. So that'll be kind of tricky to handle. Amir Coffey, 25 years of age, 76 overall. You know, he's also 
undrafted. He's a good story, so to speak, but you know, hasn't really gotten a lot of playing time, so to speak. I mean, he had a good most of playing time last year, only averaged nine points, did shoot 45%, 38% from the field. So maybe he gets a role on this team. Probably not a big one. Then we have Terrence Mann, 26 year old out of Florida State, who averaged double digits last year in increased minutes. So I'd like to maybe see him progress a little bit more as well. Brandon Boston Jr. is a 20 year old who is from Kentucky. Didn't really light it up with us last year in his rookie year. Moses Brown, a center who's really just going to get you boards. Not going to be much of a score, but like I said, you know, that's kind of what this team kind of needs down low. So maybe we'll see what Moses Brown can bring to the team. Jason Preston also is more of that floor general three-point score if need be. He needs to polish that up a little bit, though. He could be a playmaker, though. And then Muasa Diabate, he is our two-way player. He's probably going to spend a lot of time this year in the G League, our second-round pick out of Michigan and that makes up our Los Angeles Clippers very interesting team and we cannot wait to start this series with the squad as we will begin against the Los Angeles Lakers that'll be our opening day game that will not be the first game before the Lakers but we will start this series we'll see what the Los Angeles Clippers can do this year I'm hoping we can actually make a dent and make the playoffs uh, we have the firepower, just can't we hold up? But I just kind of wanted to preview guys the team, let you guys know what is going to happen. This is going to be very immersive. We're going to take a look at other scores around the league as well. Uh, let's take a look, though, at the power rankings real quick, just kind of see where they have us going into the season. 2K Sports has this as the second best team. I think that is very generous considering 2K Sports always likes to favor big markets. But I don't know if we'll be the second best team. That'd be great if we were. Eric also has us a second, and then NBA.com has us a little bit more down the list, actually way down the list, at 17. So people are expecting us to either be top of the board or middle of the pack, and I honestly think that is pretty accurate. It just depends on can we stay healthy. But yeah, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I hope you guys are ready for this series. And if you are, make sure you drop that like and you subscribe down below. Episode number two, our opening day matchup in Los Angeles against the Lakers will be on Friday. And I just got to get sliders set up, just kind of get the draft class going, and then we will get this series underway. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Leave, yourself, your, leave in the comments section below also what do you think our season is going to be and what do you think of your Los Angeles Clippers. Also, one thing I do want to mention is the Clippers in a couple years in real life We'll be moving to a new arena. They are currently playing at what used to be the Staples Center. I still like to call it the Staples Center, despite the fact that it is no longer a thing. But um, we are still going to be switching into the Intuit Dome once it opens. Now, I think that opens in 2024, which would be our third season year here in the franchise. I've kind of tossed around the idea of potentially doing that instead in year two and just kind of opening the second year with a new arena i think that'd be a lot of fun you know see a new court but also at the same time keep it realistic so let me know also in the comment section what would you think would you think we should switch arenas in year two or do we think you should do more like real life and then year three go into the intuit dome i know it's not a big difference but i can kind of play around kind of customize the court a little bit i think it'd be a lot of fun to maybe see a little bit of change with the clippers but that's also something i like to see down below but let me know what you guys think hope you guys are ready episode number two will be on friday this is mr rob and I'll see you in that one.